As has been established many times on this series, I am an old-before-my-time man within the medium of gaming. True, I'm hardly the only 30-something dork with a web series who will insist this ridiculous subset of popular culture effectively peaked around 1998 or so, but the difference with me is I've felt that way about it since 1999. As such, I tend to have a hard time relating to present-day gamer outrage about whatever new worst thing ever is supposed to have been, because I had a front-row seat to all the previous worst things ever and watched them either fizzle or get turned around and become actually good. Cell Shaded Zelda was supposed to be the worst thing ever, and now it's one of the most beloved games in the series. Jack Thompson was the worst thing ever, and then all he had to say was he also wasn't down with uppity women folk, and half of gamer YouTube decided he wasn't such a bad guy after all. Other M was the worst thing that ever happened, and now people don't even remember it happened. So I guess you'll just have to forgive me, but when I decided to revive this show and then grudgingly began absorbing a couple years worth of buzzwords and newspeak missed out on by not having to follow developments in sectors of gamings I don't personally give a damn about, in tandem with my brief respite and learned what a loot box was and why people online were mad about them all the time, my big response was pretty much, uh, whatever. I mean, I don't like them. The implementation is clearly predatory, designed to take advantage of people having less time on their hands, the false sense of intangibility associated with digital spending, the innately addictive nature of games of chance, and the popularity of the types of games they're often implemented in among the individuals particularly susceptible to such tactics, etc., etc. Yeah, I get it. They're bad. I'm just kind of, you know, struggling with how this got to be the moral event horizon for a games industry as opposed to, say, publishing the NRA's game or actual military propaganda, the litany of horrible labor practices across the spectrum of the business, that time we let Blackwater release a game, you know, all that stuff. Plus, the skeptic in me just can't help but ask if a lot of the angriest angry people would actually care that much about the, again, very real negative aspects of the loot box concept, re-gambling addiction, if it weren't the best and most effective argument for halting this particular particular incursion from the world of mobile gaming into the AAA scene, but that's neither here nor there. Either way, loot boxes are bad, let's do away with them, fine by me. That said, it both amuses and disturbs me to see so much excitement and oh boy, let's get him enthusiasm for the idea that the thing to bring down the age of loot boxes might be a succession of investigatory lawsuits originating from the EU, largely aimed at challenging the legality of loot box implementation as being compatible or not with various regional laws restricting gambling, the marketing thereof, and a host of other issues starting with third-party sites unambiguously running gambling operations, but openly stated is set to expand to include ensuring that the games themselves don't fall under this purview either, effectively breaking down to, once you attach tangible cash value to this, it becomes gambling and therefore must be regulated as such. And let's be clear, that's pretty damn hard to argue against, honestly. As in, I'm interested to see what any game publisher's defense against this would even be. That being said, what I'd caution is, Gamers getting overly excited in favor of this just because it might be a shortcut to seeing the loot box trend forced into early retirement instead of just, you know, waiting a couple of years for the industry to find an entirely new shitty way to make money other than good games people want to buy. Now, there are a lot of different facts under consideration here, and vice regulations tend to function more like a daisy cutter than a precision strike no matter how surgical you think you're being. And no, this is not coming from some reflexively moronic anti-EU all regulation is bad libertarian foolishness. Believe me, a functioning regulatory body is an immensely pleasant fantasy for a lot of us here in the States at the moment, because we don't have one anymore. But the fact of the matter is, gambling laws are almost always a big, corrupt, bureaucratic joke, usually third only behind laws governing sex work and the separation between drugs and pharmaceuticals, just a big web of arbitrary statutes about what is and isn't actually gambling because the state says so, basically. And the problems I'd see with tying GAT to gaming is that the medium has always been somewhat connected to the gambling chance casino scene, for lack of a better word, anyway. All of modern commercial gaming descends in an unbroken lineage from arcade cabinets, which in turn had ancestors in pinball machines, both of which were fixtures of billiard parlors and other ahem, game of chance adjacent establishments, and pinball machines themselves were famously even banned in New York until well into the 70s because of their association with actual gambling. Look that up. And as nice as it may sound to have a simple international court ruling make the big bad annoyance of loot boxes go away, it's probably worth keeping an eye out for unintended consequences depending what logic is actually used to get there, lest we end up in the same spot the pinball business found itself in. The language around a lot of these complaints 
constraints is broad enough to easily be extended to randomized result programming as part of game design decisions completely separate from loot boxes from what I can see, to say nothing of how nebulous extending the definition of all the way to someone could add a cash value to this situation can make things, and never mind that you're going to be hard pressed to find two experts who'll agree with you where the line actually is between predatory casino tactics targeting quote unquote whales and just regular marketing psychology. I know we're all experts because we watched that one South Park where they complained about why they wouldn't make a mobile game. You know, maybe let's take our orthodoxy on the subject from at least one other source. Like I said, I'm no doomsayer or a fan of loot boxes, nor am I someone who says you just shouldn't regulate anything for fear of overreach or abuse, but it does strike me a bit off-brand that gamers who claim to be so vociferously opposed to the very concept of boxes of unknowable mysterious consequence are so eager to open this one. Just a thought.